Okay, folks, it's Mandala turn 40, and as you might be able to see, there have been some changes. Pangea has attacked me, so, uh, poor timing, just as I went in against Ashdod, or, well, really good timing on their part. But, uh, in any case, that is, uh, gonna be a little bit of an issue, to be honest. I, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a little rough to deal with. Let's take a look at those battles. So, there was a battle in Dofaris and in Swamp of Solitude. In Dofaris... I was attacked by a pack of white centaurs. Uh, white centaurs, some of whom have rusty equipment, interestingly, which makes me think they came through the water somehow. I don't know how they could possibly have done that, though, but they all have rusty armor, which is a little bit weird. So, um, they're not even blessed, actually. They just, they just come in. Actually, they are blessed. When did they bless? When did they bless? Because he's casting... Now he's... Okay, he's casting Blessing. Yeah. So they've got their Blessing active on some of them, albeit not all. Uh, so they have Defense Skill, Magic Weapons, Quickness, Magic Resistance, and Blood Surge, just to remind you. Uh, so they're very, very scary. With that Quickness, um, their Defense Skill is absurd. My troops are not going to be able to deal with these guys in any real capacity. Uh, and as we can see, indeed, they can't. Now, they stop to fire arrows, interestingly, but yeah, they clean me up very, very quickly with no casualties. So 14 white centaurs wipe out the province defense, no problem. In Swamp of Solitude, meanwhile, uh, I am attacked by a somewhat more impressive army. Now, this is an, a stealthy army. So they've got revelers, which are stealthy, and a satyr commander. They've got white centaurs, which are stealthy, and they have a centauride hierophantid. And on my side, I have the troops that were patrolling, which is just random units that have been led by a eunuch. Um, and we go in, the Revelers go in first. Revelers are extremely efficient units. Um, they're stealthy, they're berserk. The Undisciplined is a little bit of a problem, but their morale is high enough to kind of counterbalance it. Um, and they recuperate, so afflictions don't really bother them overall. Plus they have two attacks, size two, so six attacks per square, and with the Berserker plus three, they end up hitting with pretty hard and at high attack value. So my archers do kill some of the revelers on their way in, but beyond that, we pretty much get cleaned up once again. White centaurs are very, very hard to deal with. So, yeah, that uh, goes poorly as well, and my eunuch and his archers are wiped out. Also, Olm's god, the very turn I decided to stop patrolling for him, Olm's god came back to attack Olm. He's still got his same old gearing, and he runs into my province defense and wipes him out because uh, that's just how he rolls. He's very, very tough. He's a super combatant, a pretty solid one. And he kills the commanders and routes the province defense instantly. So Ulm is under siege. My army marched into Plane of Memories, took them out with no trouble except I lost my Yeti. Alas, poor Yeti. I knew him well, Horatio, a Yeti of infinite jest. But you can see what happened here. Uh, actually, it turned out I had those guys scripted to just advance immediately. Uh, instead of hold an attack like this guy was. So I got I got some kind of a buff on him, I think. Yeah, I got bark skin on him. Uh, meanwhile, my living Mercury's charged up, wiped out some of the province defense, and then the soul slays wiped out many, many others, plus just the blizzard of crossbow bolts. My Yeti, meanwhile, uh, died of poison, I think. Yeah, the poison gave him profuse bleeding, and then he bled to death. So that's lame. But in any case, we took that over, and we have taken over range of light, so we've gotten that as well. Uh, we got extra dominion in Pinophia, because one of our eunuchs miraculously fathered a child. And in Batane, we got some money, so that's fantastic. The Veil of Infinite Horror has been found, lots of horror marks, and we successfully dispelled Burden of Time. So that's fantastic. We also got Astral Gems from Bandar Log in payment for dispelling Burden of Time. Now, movements. We're collapsing troops basically towards this side, as we have been doing, because we've got to deal with this situation. Uh, Pangea is a problem. I've talked with Pangea some. We never formally had concluded a non-aggression pact before, which was actually an oversight on my part. It was completely my fault. I forgot to respond to a message. But, uh, in any case, so Pangea is now fighting me. Um, he doesn't seem too enthusiastic about fighting me, like, really, really hard. But we'll see. Um... I'm gonna get in contact with Shinuyama, because that is, I, this is where the Garnet Sorceresses are, and assuming I can win this fight, I've got it. So after that, I don't really, I don't really care to keep fighting Ashdod all that much. I would much rather gang up with Ashdod and Shinuyama to fight Pangea. Pangea is probably the biggest threat at this moment, or at least I can spin it that way. Pangea has also attacked Bandar Log, interestingly. So Bandar Log hopefully will be an ally against them. 
Uh, that said, I hope to God Bandar Log can't reach them because uh, if Pangea is all the way over here, then that's terrifying. But this is where Is and Ermor are, so I don't think so. Uh, in any case, moving around a lot, we're moving Hoisin Ku down here to claim the Golden Throne. Uh, we're starting to build a palisade. This army is going to come down here, wipe these knights out, and besiege that palisade. Should be able to knock it down inside of a couple of turns. We've got a big old soul slay communion here. Uh, and that'll be fine. How many slaves do I actually have? One, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven. I need eight. So, uh, you were doing power of the spheres, but you can't do that anymore because you don't have any gems. You're doing power of the spheres. So you should be a communion slave. There we go. That'll be eight communion slaves. Excellent. Yan Lo has a disease, which is super unfortunate. He needs to meet up with one of these guys. Uh, so Rusho, you should join the fight as well so that you can cure Yan Lo of his disease. Excellent. We're breaking siege with our mind duelers. Um, they are still scripted to magic duel, or magic duelers rather. Still scripted to magic duel. They should kill him. Got a couple of swarmers in there too. I can set these guys to magic duel as well, just to ensure that it works. Magic duel, magic duel. Magic duel, magic duel. And pearl. And nope, wrong button. And pearl. Great, so all of you guys break the siege. And if he stays here, we should pretty much just kill him. And we've got Zhao Tu breaking the siege as well. He can't build any province defense, so if he doesn't stay, um, we should just run him off. But, just in case, we will set a whole bunch of these guys to hold an attack closest. And of course, if the magic duel doesn't function, then my mages will default to casting other spells. So that should they should communion up automatically, to be honest. And we've got these guys coming in as well. But we should be fine there. Uh, Ulm does definitely need to be pushed back. Um, because this whole thing is being a real nuisance. And I need to retake this, but I'm moving my troops to defensive positions because I don't know where else I might have stealthy forces in my territory. All of my Jade Sorceresses are moving into Batane. Honestly, I shouldn't have let them build up this much. I should have moved them earlier because I knew there was a risk of this kind of stealthy attack and 15 province defense would not suffice to hold off either of these armies. So if they had attacked this province, they would have slaughtered all of my Jade Sorceresses, which would have been a huge bummer. Uh, over here, these guys are all just standing around, manifesting vitriol, voice of Apsu, calling celestial soldiers. I have that ability now, since I've got Erlang with two air. So, I'm starting to summon some celestial soldiers. That will eat up my air gems very quickly, and that's fine. Over here, troops are moving south. Here, troops are moving west. These guys are sitting here. They are starving. That's a serious problem, but there's nothing to be done about it right at the moment. My supply usage is 400. Um, I've critically damaged the fort, so I should break it next turn and be able to storm in, and I don't think they can stop me. I don't think they can stop me. They do have at least one Zamzamite in there, uh, so they can take a defensive position and skeleton spam at me, but I think I can I think I think can bust through. And these troops may be able to reach me as well, but I, I'm, I'm just going to go for it. This army has to. We've got to take out this fortress. The other alternative would be to leave one guy holding this siege and pull the army back in order to fight Pangea, but I really, really want to take this location, the Plane of Memories. I would love to have that. And that is the turn. Um, Pangea's attack is very unfortunate. Ulm's attack, I had kind of anticipated something like this happening for quite a while. Um, it's just a nuisance, really, and I, you know, what can you say? What can you do? There's a Crystal Citadel here. That's what that fortress is? Oh, that's a magic site. That's a powerful magical site. I did not realize I should have double-checked that before now, but ooh, wow. That is valuable. Okay, well, uh, I'm not going to deal with it right now. Shinoyama's going to get that, and then I will persuade Shinoyama. To, I'll try to persuade Shinoyama to turn on Pangea. In any case, that's turn 40, and I'll see you all in turn 41. Okay, turn 41. Um, Pangea continues their rampage. They've attacked the Forest of Springs. Uh, and we got wiped out by a ton of white centaurs, backed up now by a pan. So this is now a very significant army. Before it was raiding parties. Now it is a cap only nature 4 mage with a ton of gems, backing up a large group 
of expensive sacreds. Well, they're actually not terribly expensive. That's kind of the hilarious things about thing about them. Uh, white centaurs are incredibly underpriced for what they do. But still, it's uh, it's something. Um, this pan has given himself susceptible to shock. He's cast iron skin on himself. And uh, yeah, and the white centaurs are just wiping me out. So this is a pretty a pretty beefy army. White centaurs, I mean, they do cost 55 gold, so there's that. This is, I mean, let me not downsell this. This is a very significant army. They've got a very expensive mage. They've got several sacred commanders. And they've got 70 expensive sacreds. This is the same price as about 30 anakites. So it's it's high dollar. Um, it's tough. Olm's Allfather is still raiding. Just stealing provinces. That's fine. I've hit star peaks and conquered and broken the fortress. And unexpected event. Gems. Uh, monster boar. That's a terrible event that I have to deal with. Gems. Gems. I love having luck, by the way. And I killed a Shinoyaman scout. Um, I am starting to suffer disease in the planes of memory. I'm also starting to cure diseases. So that's good. Um, I do have a lot of diseases. Like, a lot of diseases. And, of course, my guys are starving, so they all have a terrible morale debuff. That is going to make this combat really challenging. Because infantry with low morale have a strong tendency to run away. Uh, it's going to be a huge problem. Now, fortunately, my claymen are up front, and I've also got these guys up front. And so they are just going to be going straight in. Um, I've shifted my scripting around. In particular, I am casting Doom to curse all of the enemy units. I'm casting Howl, which I already had scripted, and then I'm also casting Mass Protection, which will give everybody Bark Skin. On top of the protection they already have, that will make them very resilient. And in particular, it will make these guys much more resilient. These guys, because they're 10 protection plus their damage resistance, will make them much harder to kill. And these guys, because they're ethereal and also have some natural protection, so that'll kick up to 10. It won't increase it much, but on top of the ethereality, they should be uh, a lot tougher. And so these guys will go in first. They'll poison people in the gate, and they will spit acid bolts, and that'll be fine. And then immediately behind them will come the line of clay men, who will occupy some of the space in the gate. They're basically immune to poison, so as long as they're taking space in the gate... Oh, and they regenerate, of course. So as long as they're standing there taking up space, they should be uh, should be very tough. I'll be spamming out my soul slays, and then my mages will shift to casting freely. And they should... Oh, and I have flaming arrows, so I'll have tons and tons of arrows and crossbow bolts flying as well. And after they soul slay, they should switch over to uh, random earth buffs on the archers, which won't take much fatigue, and occasionally gifts from heaven, which could be very useful. So... I have a shot here. It's not as great a shot as I would like, partially due to the supply issues, but I think I can probably take them because I think it's mostly skeletons in there. Now, they'll be able to form a Blood Sabbath, and once they do that, they'll be able to cast fire spells very effectively. Uh, unfortunately, fire elementals are not going to be affected by my flaming arrows, obviously, but I can still kill them with magic or just with sheer quantity of arrows since they don't have any protection. They're just, uh, if they rely on ethereality, for their defenses. So I expect a lot of undead, I expect fire elementals, I expect uh, possibly flaming arrows coming back at me, I'm not sure about that, but I, I think I can probably punch through. This I can't fight right now, so I need to keep gathering troops and researching. Uh, I am calling Huli Jing. I'm contacting a Huli Jing here, and I'm contacting a Huli Jing in Tianqi itself. Uh, the nature gems I have left, I'll then be able to use them for raiding purposes. I'm moving these armies down here into Ministra. Down here, I'm actually not recruiting anything except a mage in Ulm because I'm out of money. Actually, I could recruit two footmen. That's fine. Hu Jingdi is building up the defenses there. We're claiming the throne, still building the palisade. I think they're working their way towards Zenthra, this army, and I'm not sure I can stop them. So if necessary, I'm claiming the throne now, and if necessary, I will actually run my troops off this throne in order to save them. Uh, because I don't think the mages in Ministra and the troops in Ministra cannot stop that Pangean army. There just aren't enough, and they just aren't strong enough. Now, if you add in all these mages, I might be able to do something, but I don't have many troops here. So that's a bummer. Um, I could... I have a ton of earth gems, so one thing I could do is I could start spamming out some ogres. Uh, the issue is ogres are really only good for chaff, so what I would actually want to do is I'd go into combat and I would spam out um, earth elementals in combat in a communion, and that could potentially inflict damage. I'm not sure it could actually stop 
all of these white centaurs, because white centaurs move very fast and hit very hard. And these ones in particular have those defensive buffs that make them very difficult to kill. So I don't think trampling with a relatively limited number of, uh, of earth elementals would really do the job. I need level 7 for living earth if I'm going to do that. And spamming enough living earth could potentially do it. But in any case, that would, that would wear out my communion very, very quickly. The other option, of course, would be Maws of the Earth. Maws could be very effective. It would take a lot of gems, but I could I could throw a whole bunch of Maws and do some real damage. Um, and spam Marble Warriors on defending units to get them really, really tough. That's an option. Uh, it's not really an option I can do right now. Also, unfortunately, I haven't gotten any, any E2 randoms. So... What I'd like would be, I'd like to get an E2 and then empower him to E3, and then uh, use that, or possibly even the E3 out the gate if I've been really, really lucky, and then I would use that to uh, to ramp up to cast Wizard's Tower and some of the big Earth spells with Earth Boots and such. Uh, don't have that option right at the moment, though. Still spamming out troops from Tian Shi, which is great. Not recruiting any troops in Oak Beach, because it's far from the current front lines. Recruiting some troops in Pergamy. And, of course, some troops in Ministra and Batane. Uh, and I'm not recruiting any troops in Bithyne, because once again, I'm out of gold. But overall, things are still going okay. If we win that, I I'm pretty sure we're going to win this. I'm not sure if we're going to win this or not, because of the starving debuff. That really does hurt me. Um, we'll see. We will see how it goes. I'm hopeful, but it's not guaranteed. I could well lose this army. Losing this army would be a pretty significant blow, but... So long as I keep this place under siege, which I will do because I have uh, Vinzel holding the siege down, and then I can move some more units in to reinforce. Um, as long as I keep that under under wraps, he can't move his Garnet Sorceresses anywhere except the ones he's already moved out, and he also can't recruit anymore. So that's important. It's important to hold that siege as much as I can. These ladies are still researching. My research is still respectable despite the number of mages that I'm moving around, 1,100 a month. That's good. And uh, beyond that, that's about all I'm doing right now. Down here, I've got all these guys patrolling, just in case he doubles back to try and besiege Ulm again. Uh, he probably won't, but he might. It's always possible, and we'll see what happens. I may also actually launch some troops out to take one of his provinces. Like, I could send Jan Lao. Uh, yep, Jan Lao. Where? There he is. Go take that province back from Ulm, just for funsies. Unfortunately, uh, Pangea's raiding is crippling my gem economy. They're stealing a ton of my gem income. Like right there, I've lost uh, an air gem and two astral, and here I'm going to lose two astral and a death. And of course, up here, I've lost the throne of the moon. So I'm going to have to start counter raiding pretty quickly. Middle Age Chen Shi is pretty bad at that. Um, I don't have good thugs. The Hu Li Jing will help because they can raid with Swarm or with, uh, more importantly, with Creeping Doom. They can just spam out tons and tons and tons of bugs by spending nature gems, so that helps. But uh, beyond that, it's a little bit tricky sometimes. So, that was turn 41, and I'll see you in turn 42. Okay, folks, turn 42. Um, this turn didn't go great. It didn't go entirely horribly. Um, I was hit by a Seeking Arrow, which killed an Alchemist of the Five Elements. Um, I did claim the Golden Throne, which is fantastic, and the Throne of the First Age has also been claimed. We have contacted Huli Jing twice, which I should have done before. Um, excuse me, I've had this capacity for a turn or two and I haven't done it, so I've got two Huli Jing now, uh, which are, of course, you know, high-level nature uh, mages with other randoms. So one got water and earth, which is okay, and one got air and earth, which is also fine. Uh, the earth means that they can cast Strength of Gaia in order to buff their own nature magic even further so that they can cast the very high-level spells. Now. There was a battle at the Fortress of Plane of Memories, which I lost, and I'll show you why I lost it. So I have my army all assembled here. I've got my big pile of archers. I've got some guys in the back just in case they attack rear me. I've got my lineup of magical creatures up in the front, more crossbows, more infantry, and my big communion of mages, right, who are going to be soul slaying. Um, they actually had more chaff infantry than I anticipated, so the soul slays weren't nearly as effective as I had hoped. But what happened is, I was communing up, they summoned a whole bunch of lesser fire elementals, which is perfectly reasonable. The crossbows went in and started causing some damage. But then, they cast Rigor Mortis, 
Uh, I'm not sure which one cast Rigor Mortis. It was probably Yedidiah here since he's the Death 3 one. Yeah, it has to have been Yedidiah. And then on top of that, a very unfortunate thing happened. Uh, if we watch here for a second, I cast Mass Protection, right? So all of my troops now have very high protection values, which is good. Well, it's good, except immediately thereafter, he casts Heat from Hell. Heat from Hell does uh, fatigue damage, which is heat damage, to everyone that it hits. And when you have Bark Skin, you are vulnerable to fire. So the Heat from Hell started lighting my units on fire. Um, and I think, honestly, that was one of the major contributors to why this went south as rapidly as it did. We got the Howl off. Uh, Howl was nerfed in the patch that introduced Late Age Flegra, so it spawns fewer wolves. But we did still get some wolves in here in the rear. This guy retreated, Zodkiel. Um, and these wolves are, are starting to chew on the Rephite Sages in the back here, distracting some of the skeletons. Up front, um, the Lesser Fire Elementals are being incredibly damaging because, as as I said, I am at the moment vulnerable to fire damage because I, I dropped mass protection. That was a strategic error on my part, frankly. Um, I shouldn't have done that, knowing that Ashdod has a lot of fire magic, I shouldn't have done that, and especially not going into uh, all these Garnet Sorceresses. So, uh, the crossbows are firing, the units are fighting, it's a great big mess, and with the Rigor Mortis active, my troops are actually starting to fatigue out, and in particular, my mages are fatiguing out. Rigor Mortis is hell on communions in particular, because all the communion slaves get extra fatigue every round, and the reinvigoration really isn't enough to counteract it, and it becomes a huge mess. So, basically, my mages just ran out of juice. Um, his did too, but by that time my, my infantry was entirely on fire, and in fact many of my mages were on fire. So we all routed and died. Uh, so we did lose the battle. We inflicted pretty significant damage. Uh, we can look at the Fortress of Star, not Star Peaks, Fortress of, I clicked it again, Fortress of Plane of Memories. So you can see my army was essentially wiped out. Uh, my Celestial Master was killed, my Imperial Alchemists were killed. <sighs> my Imperial Geomancers, a few survived, but most of them were killed, partially due to this bug where, I'm not sure, I, I think it's a bug. Th there's no icon for it or mechanic for it, where communion slaves are just stuck in place even after they've gotten back up above 100 uh, fatigue. It's it's very confusing. Anyway, I lost all about 130 of you, all but about 130 units. On the enemy side, I did kill a significant number of mages. I killed a sage, I killed two Zamzamites, which is very useful and I killed 11 of his 13 Garnet Sorceresses. So it wasn't entirely a waste. If you count up the resources, eh, he lost about two-thirds of the resources that I did, I believe. So, eh, not great. But at the very least, I've kept him under siege. So we retreated. Uh, pretty much all of my commanders got away, except for one Imperial Geomancer there. And we got 70 random units back as well. Uh, in the fortress at Star Peaks, we just ran over it. There was nothing there but two Malkis, so my army destroyed the place, and in Ulm we got three mirror armors for no reason, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, in Range of Light, Odin continues his rampage, just raiding provinces away, doesn't really bother me all that much, and we didn't find any magic sites but the voice of Apsu. So, Pangea's army has disappeared, the army that they had collected here, and what I'm sure they've done is, especially because I just claimed this throne, they will have moved here, stealthily, and then they will be attacking Zenthra. Uh, that's, like, I'm guessing that's what they're doing, and so I've set a little trap. I don't have all that many troops, but I do have a couple packs of archers slash crossbowmen and a lot of mages. So we've got all my guys way at the back where it will take the white centaurs the longest to reach them. We have nature mages with crystal matrixes scattered around. They will be casting Creeping Doom. Uh, my earth mages, communion master, iron skin, that should get them within range, I believe. And then they will start throwing Maws of the Earth, which does armor-piercing damage and, more importantly, Earth Grips. So White Centaurs rely a lot on having high defensive skills and being hard to kill. Uh, earth Grip will stop them in place so that they can be chopped up by my crossbows and my glaives, of which I have a significant number. I have some glaives mixed into both groups. I only have about 40 infantry total and about 80 crossbows. Uh, up against 70 white centaurs, it's bad odds, but my magic should be able to turn the tides. I'll be spamming a lot of Maws of the Earth. Um, I will be... I don't know why it says... Oh yeah, because he's summoning Earth Power, so then he can technically Maws right after that. But in the Communion, I have 8 Communion Slaves. I have a bunch of 
Maws of the Earth Throwers, four of them. And then I also have my Creeping Doom. I also have Sun Tafuan, if that's even close to how it's pronounced. Casting Mass Protection. Against Fire, this is a terrible idea. Against Pangea, it's a great idea. Mass Protection will push the prop values on these guys up to about 18. And uh, will help them survive against the White Centaurs. The other, the other option, I, I'm kind of torn whether I want Mass Protection or Howl. Um... Or both, for that matter, because I could have one of these guys cast Howl. Yeah, let's uh, let's get a Howl in here, just because Howl is a great distraction. So let's throw a Howl in, and then he'll go to sleep. This will this will all put a lot of pressure on the communion. I do have I've set some of the extra people to be communion slaves. I have four down there, and then up here five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven communion slaves. Uh, 12. So, should be able to spread the fatigue out enough that I don't lose slaves. Um, and I have another marble, uh, a marble warriors caster up here. I don't really need marble warriors. I need, uh, why don't you do, what buff don't I have? You could actually throw blade winds. Well, white centaurs have some armor. Uh, blade wind wouldn't be terrible. Why don't you drop astro, or actually, why don't you drop anti-magic just in case because you've got a couple of astral pearls how many pearls does it take one yeah communion master anti-magic and then you too can earth elementals i'm not i'm not super impressed with earth elementals they're just not very good they can't trample but they get, they get hurt so quickly and when they get hurt of course they shrink and then they become worse and uh, they're the worst elemental just spam Maws of the Earth again. Um, the Creeping Doom will provide me with bodies, because every cast of Creeping Doom gives you uh, 70 or more. Since I have 8 Communion Slaves, these guys will be effectively Nature 4, and so the Creeping Doom will actually give them 75 insects, each of which of course has to be killed. So the, the Creeping Doom will give me quite a bit of chaff uh, in pretty short order. I mean, I've got round 2, I'll have 140. Round 3 takes a little bit longer than a full round to cast, but 210 more, then I have a fourth cast there. Um, why don't we script it one more time? Just to make sure. They're casting a spell, they're casting a random spell right the first round, just to kind of uh, use up a turn, because they have to wait while the slaves cast Communion Slave before they can cast Creeping Doom. If they try to cast it, if I script them to cast it round one, even though they are Communion Masters, there's no slaves in the Communion when they start casting, so they wouldn't cast it, they would go off script for that round, because they don't have the paths to cast Creeping Doom outside of the Communion. So, uh, this should be interesting. I don't know, I'm not quite sure if this army will be able to take out that many Hellblessed uh, White Centaurs, but I'm going to give it a shot. I think it has a chance, and if I can eliminate that army, that will be a significant blow to Pangea's fighting capabilities. Um, white Centaurs are fairly rare. I did lose this province to Ashdod. Uh, my armies are bouncing back into Plane of Memories. It's a much weaker army than I had last time, but it's also a much weaker enemy than I had last time. So, I think I can probably manage. I'm throwing a little bit of Gifts from Heaven, because I have a small communion coming with me. Um, I'm not casting Mass Protection, I'm just casting Creeping Doom with Ba, so that will give more chaff to combat his Skeleton Chaff. And beyond that, I think I'm just going to keep the place under siege. Um, it is repaired a little bit, but since it has Vinzel under siege, what I'm hoping is he tries to sally with some of his troops, and my incoming army wipes them out. Beyond that, uh, I've got Erlang here. What can Erlang do? He could summon Yetis. I don't have the gems for it. Uh, I don't have the gems to call any more Celestial Soldiers either. Um, he can go back to casting Living Mercury, I guess. Really am running short on gems, though. I also need to declare another Prophet. I think, um, I might make Kanchi, Kanchi a prophet, just so that I have one. Um, because right now I only have one Holy Three, and yes, she's flying, which is very, very nice, but still having only one Holy Three is a little bit of a limiter. Uh, or I could make Lutung Pin a prophet. Nah, I'm just going to make this guy a prophet, just to become prophet. And then I can reclaim the Throne of the Moon, and I would love to manage to put a fort there, actually, but I'm going to have to stack this whole big army 
plus a defensive communion on top of it in order to stop Pangaea from taking it back, which I can do. That won't be too much of a problem. So that is turn 42. We're laying this trap that I hope they'll fall into. Uh, this army is moving out to attack Ulm's god. Hopefully he will fall into that trap, but if not, uh, it won't be a huge loss. In terms of recruitment here, uh, we have a lot of resources, so we're actually going to pump out a few Imperial Crossbowmen, I think. And that will be that. So, thanks for watching. I will see you all in turn 43. Alright, folks, quick update to turn 42 here. Uh, I just talked with Ashdod, and we made an agreement. We've made a deal with the devil. I am sending them. So this is the, the fort that he's recruiting his garments out of. I'm buying it. I'm sending him 40 Earth Gems to buy that fort, because we just had that big battle, and he doesn't really want to fight me because he's more worried about Pangaea, and frankly, I'm kind of worried about Pangaea too. So, I'm going to send him 40 Earth Gems and move my commander away. He'll move all of his valuable units out of this fort. I will go in and take it, and we have a non-aggression pact for uh, a non-aggression pact three. So, uh, I'm about to be Blood Tianchi. <laughs> oh, it's going to be great. Um, I'm, I'm sure he's going to conspire against me in order to ensure that I can't, in order to try and ensure that I can't really take advantage of that. But I think I can probably manage. So, it'll be interesting. We will see how things go there. Just wanted to update that. I'm sending this Udijing down here to help ambush Pangea, assuming they're going to attack me there. And so I have my Howl. Uh, he was casting mass, pro she was casting mass protection. And now the new one is casting mass protection. Needs to be back there. So she can actually cast Creeping Doom. Just spam Creeping Doom. I will have so many bugs, you guys. You don't even know. So, so many bugs. So, that's the turn. I'll see you in turn 43.